Have you ever wasted hours, days, perhaps even weeks of your life because you, as an AI creative enthusiast, wanted to install the latest and greatest little app on your machine and all of a sudden all configuration hell broke loose? Haha, <laughs> me too, happened yesterday. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI. And if you're going to play in the AI space on your own local machine, you are inviting all kinds of configuration nightmares. So many of these AI solutions use different backends, different versions of Python or Kudu or whatever the hell. And depending on how many AI pots you've got your fingers in, you could have the need for multiple configurations on your system. And eventually, unless you're a total expert, which I am not, something is going to break. Now, we've all been hearing a lot about the DeepSeek model and how it's shaking the world up. But in terms of creative AI, there are a couple of things about it that are very interesting. They just released a model called Janus Pro, which is excellent at looking at images and giving you the ability to interact with them. Wow, what are you even talking about? I'm going to tell you. If you create a lot of AI images, you have probably heard of or used a model called Florence 2 that looks at your image and then creates a description for you. Florence would read the description, that would become the prompt for your image, and voila, you have an AI image that is at least close to the original based on the description that Florence gave you. But there's a couple of issues with Florence. One is it can be huge and cumbersome to download, and second, all it's going to do is give you a description. What's different about the Janus Pro model is that it's more of an LLM, and it doesn't just by default describe your image unless you tell it to. It will do whatever you ask of it. For example, you could have it describe an image in the terms of a video so that you could feed that prompt into an AI video generator and get more movement in it. Cutting to the chase, I found a workflow for Janus Pro yesterday and I installed it onto my system. And when I installed the requirements for the Janus Pro model, it broke several of my custom nodes in my Comfy UI installation. And I just went through this a few weeks ago. So this was a nightmare. And it took me hours yesterday just to get things back the way they were. How do we avoid this? We use solutions like our sponsor, Mimic PC. Now, Mimic PC has been a sponsor of ours for months and months now because they are a perfect solution for AI creatives who like to tinker around and don't want to screw up their system. Every now and then I get overconfident and just go ahead and put it on my system without testing it somewhere else first and what happened yesterday is the result. If you've never checked out Mimic PC, it allows you to run AI applications on computers that have massive GPUs and storage facility. This is perfect for someone who either doesn't have a powerful GPU of their own or someone like me who likes to do multiple things at once and would love to have a whole room of computers working at the same time. And that's what Mimic PC allows you to do. In fact, in today's video, we're going to be running three different machines at the same time, which of course I could not do here locally. I'm going to provide links to all of these workflows. So let's start with this Janus Pro model and see what it actually does. Here's just a quick example. I uploaded an image of a frog holding a Bob Doyle media sign. I told Janus to describe this image in detail and it wrote this description. An image features a small green frog sitting on a large green leaf. The frog is holding a rectangle, etc. And then the other thing that's interesting about Janus Pro is it will also generate images. But as you can see, they're not high quality like Flux or anything like that. So to me, this is just sort of a, that's kind of cool. These two nodes here are the magic of this workflow. Let's choose a different image to work with. And I'll show you all different kinds of ways that we can use this. So here is an image of four dogs playing poker. So if I say describe this image in detail and click on Q, in just a few seconds we get a very detailed description of this image. Talking about the leftmost dog, the second dog from the left, the third dog on the left, like incredibly detailed. So if we took this prompt, for example, and went over to just a basic flux workflow and paste that in there and generate that image, 20 steps later, we get a much more high quality image that at least tries to follow the prompt. We've got the goggles, we've got the bow ties, although we are missing a dog. But that's just the simplest use of this, describing the image in detail. What we can do, because this is an LLM, is say, describe this image in detail, but replace any references to dogs with cats. All right, now let's cue that prompt. And we have reference to a muscular cat here, a brown cat with a red bow tie, a golden colored cat with a red bow tie. It doesn't break it down into the four different descriptions. And here is the Janus generated version. Let's take this prompt and take it back over to our flux generator and cue that. So now we basically have the same image except with cats rather than dogs. But that's all pretty cartoony what we've got here. So let's see if we can make the image as photo realistic as possible and have the photo taken with a Canon camera. I won't even mention a model. Let's just see what we get here. We'll cue that up. Now we've got the words photorealistic. I don't see anything about a camera though. Let's change the prompt and make sure to mention a model of professional camera that took the image. Describing the image as a candid shot of real animals. 
So really all I've got here is this image was captured using a high-end professional camera. It's not going to fill in the blanks for me. Let's just go ahead and copy this and render it over here in the Flux workflow. And this is the one that we got from the Janus Pro model. All right, so now we've got some photorealistic casts. We've got the goggles, we've got the ties. You see where I'm going with this. Okay, so that's all good for images, but we do a lot of video work around here, don't we? And these LTX models and the Hunwan models, they all like a certain type of prompt, you know, lots of details and descriptions. And they want descriptions of movement and the word video rather than image. So let's just play with this prompt a little bit. So we'll describe the image in detail, replace any reference to dogs with, how about turtles, just for fun, make the visuals as photorealistic as possible, and I won't worry about this camera thing, and make your description suitable for use with the LTXV video model using descriptions of engaging movement and interaction between the turtles. Okay, so now let's cue that up. And now we've got a scene that describes anthropomorphic turtles gathered around a wooden table. We've got the goggles description and leaning forward with a wide smile. We've got body language. We've got camaraderie engage in game with animated gestures and focused attention. I've loaded up an LTX text to video generator. I'm actually using the older 0.9 version of the LTX model. It's just not installed on this particular Mimic machine at the moment. So the quality of the output isn't going to be as great as it would be with the 0.91 model. But we're going to use this prompt that Janus Pro gave us and generate this video. So this is the greatest example of output again because I'm using the older 0.9 model. But I think what we're really looking at is the fact that it did prompt this type of interaction. It's here in the video. And of course I had taken out any reference to photorealistic. Let's see if we can just find a more updated workflow that is using the 0.91 model. So we can just come over to the Discover section and do a search for LTX. And right here we've got an LTX 0.91 simple text to video and image to video. Let's just go ahead and run this machine. I'm going to choose a large pro, so we got plenty of RAM. I'll go ahead and do automatic extension, even though I probably don't need it in this example. That just prevents the machine from shutting down in the middle of a process if you walk away from it or whatever. So now as this one's loading, I'll have four high-powered AI machines cranking along for me at the exact same time time for literally a couple of dollars an hour. Well, here's a version I did with the 0.91 LTX video model, which is clearly much better. Not perfect, but better. So I hope I've accomplished a couple of things here today. One is to show you with the flexibility of the Janus Pro model, if you are an AI image or video creator, but also hopefully to drive the point home again about the benefit of having offline GPU power for testing new things or amplifying your ability to be productive. If these are the types of solutions you like to learn more about, well, why not subscribe to the channel? Because this is what we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...